Hi, welcome back. We're here at EMC World, live on theCUBE. I'm Jeff Kelly, uh, Wikibon's big data analyst. I'm here uh, with uh, my good friend, Yves de Montchieu. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did, hello oh. Jeff. Good to be back on theCUBE. Good to have you, it's your second time it on is, the Cube with it us. It is, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we were at Strata last time. Uh, a lot has happened in the big data world between now and then. Uh, so why don't you kind of fill in our audience a little bit about Talon and kind of where you guys come from, and then we can kind of talk about the role of data integration, et cetera, in the big data movement. And I'd also like to hear about your impressions of the show here. Wow, a lot, all right. Well, you know. A lot to fit in on the Cube. Three months is a long time in the big data world, especially since you know big data is open source driven, and mm -hmm. open source is a factor of innovation, so everything is accelerated. So what has happened in the world of big data and in the world of big data integration, especially because this is what we are dealing with, we actually came out last week with the GA version of Talent Open Studio for big data mm -hmm. and the Talent Platform for big data. And as you know, Jeff, we are trying to democratize big data. Uh, it's not an easy fit, mm -hmm. and big data is very complex technology. Of course, you know, Hadoop make it simpler than having to write massively parallel programming on your own. Go to MapReduce, which is a terrific framework for right. that. But it still requires some fairly advanced programming features. I mm -hmm. mean, MapReduce is not something that any developer can grasp overnight, right. you need some serious Java development uh, uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. And data scientists are in high demand. I mean, those guys totally. can actually demand pretty high salaries and there are not a lot of them out there. Yeah, right, absolutely. So what we want to do here is to make it affordable for companies to actually use big data, to use Hadoop technologies. So the same way Talent has been historically democratizing integration, mm -hmm. we are set on a mission to democratize big data. Okay, well, why don't we dig into that a little bit more about democracy big data, exactly what do you mean and what's your approach to actually making big data more accessible from a data integration uh, standpoint? Right, so as I was saying, instead of having to write that complex, you know, Hadoop programming, MapReduce programs, mm -hmm. Piglet in scripts, mm -hmm. Hive SQL and whatnot, what Talent provides is an additional level of abstraction. So it's a completely graphical user interface. Mm -hmm. You design your data integration jobs, dra drag and drop components, your sources, your targets, the transformations in between, everything is built graphically. And then Talent is going to generate code. So it's not engine based, it's code generation, which means that that code will run inside Hadoop. So of course we are keeping the power of Hadoop, we are keeping the massively parallel MapReduce kind of approach, mm -hmm. but doing that in a much more simpler way. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to kind of abstract away some of that complexity. Abstract it graphically and mm -hmm. make it more powerful, bring additional features such as, for example, data quality. You know, mm -hmm. big data, if it's bad data, becomes big, bad data. <laughs> and you get into right. trouble a lot more quickly <laughs> with big, bad data than just bad data. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, so you mentioned kind of Hadoop, the open source community, talent, an open source company. Uh, so, you know, we're here at EMC World, which, uh, you know, is a proprietary, uh, you know, their approach to big data is fairly proprietary, although they're opening up some aspects of their business. Uh, kind of talk to me a little bit about how talent fits into the big data uh, ecosystem and how being an open source company uh, either helps or hurts in that environment? Well, you know, you make a very good point. Uh, of course, EMC has a lot of technology. EMC is a huge company, mm -hmm. they do lots of stuff, big data, cloud, and many, many different things. Um, but when it comes to Hadoop, EMC, and specifically their Green Plum division, right. is actually embarking open source technology. Mm -hmm. MAPAR, which is the uh, one of the three leading Hadoop distributions, mm -hmm. is actually embedded as Green Plum MR, is part of Green Plum HD, mm -hmm. so it's based on open source. Pretty much everything out there, big data, is actually based on open source. You know, even probably the largest proprietary software vendor in the world, the guys you know who advertise, <laughs> in the Las Vegas airport on taxis here. Yes, those guys. We don't guys. really <laughs> like EMC, but <laughs> we, uh, uh, we their logo is red. You know what I'm talking about? I think I know what They talking. have a deal with Cloudera, so another yes. Hadoop distribution. So mm -hmm. everybody who does big data uses Hadoop, right. and uh, Hadoop is essentially open source. So uh, was that a more natural fit for Talon? Because you come from, uh, you know, been around before the big data movement really uh, started, or at least was named. So I, I imagine your legacy is in helping organizations with some of more, the more traditional data integration issues, moving data from operational systems into analytic environments, things like that. So how has being, being an open source company helped you kind of get into this market? And maybe dig in a little bit that some of the differences, the challenges that big data integration poses versus more traditional data integration, for lack of a better term. Yes, so the first thing is that, you know, big data is not something really new. Companies have been doing big data for a long time. 
the difference is that they now have technologies that allow them to democratize big data, and that mm -hmm. technology is primarily Hadoop. You got other NoSQL databases, but it's primarily Hadoop. But companies have been doing big data with, with Greenplum, for example, for a long time. You know, it's massively parallel architecture for a columnar oriented database, mm -hmm. and we have had support for Greenplum technology for a long time. So when it comes to Greenplum, now we have combined support for the Greenplum, I would say, traditional database, mm -hmm. as well as for the Greenplum uh, Hadoop distribution. And because Greenplum allows you to bring together the conventional structured relational data mm -hmm. with the structured, poly structured and unstructured big data, mm -hmm. uh, Talent offers a very interesting value proposition for, for Greenplum users. Now that's true of course of Greenplum users, but that's true of pretty much any database mm -hmm. user out there that want to combine, that would say, relational data with big data. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so yeah, we're seeing that as a use case uh, among our community at Wikibon. So tell us a little bit about what you're seeing among your customers. Is, is adoption of what is being called big data uh, happening in, to, to a large degree within your customer base? Um, to kind of gauge where, where in the, um, the life cycle, adoption life cycle of big data you, you're seeing your customers? Well, historically, many of our customers have had massive amounts of data that they've not been able to leverage efficiently because they didn't have access to technology mm -hmm. that allowed them to leverage this big data. You know, you have to be essentially a financial institution uh, or, uh, I don't know, a massive e-commerce company mm -hmm. to have big data technology in the past. Hadoop democratizes big data, allows you to deploy essentially free technology or at least very inexpensive technology on a grid of commodity hardware that doesn't require you to invest into super expensive hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so Talent helps you, of course, implement those Hadoop architectures. Uh, do it faster, uh, do it more efficiently, and uh, don't require you to invest into very expensive data integration software that would be kind of mm -hmm. a contradiction with using the, uh, I would say, open source framework for big data, but have to use very expensive data integration technology. Mm -hmm, absolutely, so, uh, so in terms of when, you, when you're going to customer situations, are you doing a lot of education around just what is big data? Are we still at that level, do you think, in the market? Or is, are, are companies, uh, your customers, starting to, to, ready to take that kind of next step and really start uh, not just maybe experimenting with the Hadoop and some other big data approaches, but actually putting some systems into production? I think that companies today understand what big data is. They understand what kind of big data they have. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily understand how they can get value out of their big data. So that's where the education resides now. Mm -hmm. So they got those, you know, those log files, those historical customer records, those transactions of all kinds depending on, on, their, on their business, mm -hmm. and they are trying to figure out how to extract value out of them. Now, a lot of companies are still in the very early stages. I mean, we are still in mm. the early adopter, yep. very early adopter phase. Right. And they are experimenting. They are working by you know, trial and there are iterations. And that's also a place where open source brings tremendous value. You don't need to engage an army of developers to mm -hmm. do that stuff. You can try something, do some what if scenarios, iterate, try again. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, being able to leverage an infrastructure that's affordable, that can be used without advanced expertise, bring tremendous value in those for those companies who are trying to figure out what kind of value they're going to derive from big data. Right, that whole iterative approach is very much at the core of what big data is all about, being able to ask questions and experiment before you kind of go into full production and start integrating some of the uh, your insights into business processes and applications. So that, that's a perfect fit there. Absolutely, and that's what data scientists are about. Now yep. you've got different, I would say, degree of expertise for data scientists, as I was saying. You've got the advanced Java developers with MapReduce expertise, mm -hmm. and you've got the guys who know their data, who know what the data is about, but don't necessarily have the expertise to, to right. go and deploy it. Right, absolutely. So, uh, you know, like me, this is, uh, I believe, your first EMC world? Is that right? That's the first time I am coming personally. Talent has been a sponsor of EMC World in the past, but that's the first time I'm here myself. Likewise for myself. So I'm curious to get your impressions. Um, for me, I think what really struck me was at the very start of the conference, Joe Tucci's uh, keynote, and he led with talking about big data, pred predictive analytics as kind of the killer application of the future. Uh, this coming from EMC, which has largely been known as a storage company, an infrastructure company. Uh, so to me, that says something about where EMC's priorities are. I wonder, what's your impression of the show and kind of EMC's uh, change, the evolution of EMC that we've seen over, over the last couple of years since the Green Plum acquisition and some others? Well, I mean, frankly, Jeff, I'm, I'm blown away. EMC is a, 
a gigantic company with a gigantic customer base with a very broad offering and a very consistent message for mm -hmm. a company this size with the number of products that they have. I think they are doing a great job of bringing everything together. I mean, as you said, just to choose keynotes, I mean, beyond the fact that the theatrics were absolutely <laughs> fabulous, you know, yes. Space Age, and that's great. You know, the story around hybrid cloud and big data was very consistent, and all the products actually tie into this, uh, this strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I think they put on a very good show, and they are all on message. Uh, which as you said, in a company this large with uh, you know, this many uh, product releases and things going on this week is, is, is not an easy feat, so uh, they should be commended for I mean, look for at that. some other very large software and hardware companies. They have been pretty consistent over the years into their positioning. I mean, Oracle is still Oracle. It's bigger than 20 years ago, but mm -hmm. still the same type of company. SAP, same story. I mean, EMC, yeah, they are coming from very far. They were a storage, a hardware vendor, mm -hmm. and now they are all about transforming IT, transforming business, transforming yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've learned the, uh, the tagline, and very, very interesting message, very yes. interesting uh, strategy. I'm, I'm already looking forward to next year to see, uh, see what further steps they take in that evolution. But Indeed. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we are going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit with uh, data scientists from Greenplum. They're going to talk about uh, some customer use cases and some other uh, uh, topics uh, of interest to data scientists. So we'll be right back.